Okay, well, I said at the end of the last episode I'd try and hurry up and get another one out. So this is episode 34. Lots of small details in this episode, some things to fit up, and some tools, got some wiring coming. Welcome along. So one of those details was getting my flapper on mounting brackets and these are the Series 7 style compared to the original Series 5 which are a mess. These are much better design uh, so I have, I'll show a close up. This is the rattle can white that I had mixed up at a Westco body shop and then their clear coat on top of that and I also have a red uh, which matches the powder coating. Speaking of which these are those butt ribs and these two are the original powder coating and these two are the rattle can paint. Uh, super close match. Anyway, so I'm going to roll this plane out in the sunshine, fold the wings, because you have to do that to get these on. I'm going to make sure that the brackets are in the correct location. But before I push it outside, let me show you what I've been up to. In the last episode, I had the prop on, and I said I had it just kind of faked in place. One of the things that I thought was going to be a concern is that this right here that my finger is on is the prop hub, and this is the ring, which is essentially the alternator on this engine. And I was worried that the bolts were too long and they were going to dig in here and it turns out that was justified so I did not torque them all the way down and I also found that they were the threads were kind of tight at the bottom so two things that had to happen one is that I had to carefully measure for the proper length bolts and again I got my fingers on these right here these are already the proper length there's no need to adjust those but there are some if I had this outer portion of the hub off there's some short bolts at the base which bolt into the flange and then there's these long ones out here, which go all the way through. And you can see what would have happened if I had torqued this bolt all the way through. It would have gone clear into this alternator ring, and that's bad. So I have the have some short bolts down there that are ready to go in. And by short, I mean shorter. And again, the threaded holes seem kind of tight in the bottom, so I have a bottoming tap on order. It should actually be at my house already today. So last time I had mocked up the location of my coil packs. I haven't moved them at all yet. Another thing that would have showed up today with the bottom tap was some more Adele clamps, including some one inch clamps. I'll get back to that in just a minute. Then I started working on my fuel pump installation and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a good angle on this or not. So that's the pair of fuel pumps. They say to use three Adele clamps. I have two of them are already drilled into the firewall. Uh, I left them a little bit loose so I could reposition things and a third clamp goes around this other pump and I will wait to drill that hole because access is kind of tight until I have pulled this engine off to address some of those other things I need to catch up but one of the cool things again I don't know if you'll be able to see it right here is an existing hole in the firewall that I'm going to do a bulkhead fitting and six hose I'm going to put a 90 degree elbow on there that points out to the left side of the airplane then I'm just going to have a u-shaped loop because this is the inlet for that pair of pumps then I'm going to convert this probably to just a straight fitting. Then here's the outlet of the pumps straight into the throttle body. And recall that there are not fuel nozzles in the throttle body itself. It meters the fuel the injector housing like this one down here or like you might see on the Lycoming and Continental with that spider of the thin lines like that that goes to each cylinder. So the fuel comes out of this fitting and goes into here. That's gonna be A and three. You need to figure that part out and order some of those fittings. And again, the purpose of this installation besides the uh, high five for the entire crew here was to just figure out where everything's gonna go for a more permanent installation. I think the pumps are gonna work out fine. The coils are gonna work out fine. And then of course I need to figure out where the oil tank is gonna hang. I know where it's gonna hang, it's gonna be right here, but the method I used to attach, I'm gonna to attach to two sides, it's gonna hang down, and I'm gonna capture the tank instead of welding on tabs. My short list of things to do is to mount these triangle guys right here. I thought I was just coming down to mess around and get a few dimensions. I did have my uh, AN6 fittings show up, so this is the 90 degree elbow. I decided to go with that. I thought I was getting a 90 degree to go on my straight bulkhead fitting, but what I did was order a 90 degree bulkhead fitting, and that's what I ended up using right here. 
I had to run down to the aviation department at my local Tacoma Screw and get uh, a couple stainless washers to uh, shim up the thickness, but uh, that's going to be secure. Then I started attacking these things right here, these triangle gussets, and I probably went way overboard on the rivets, so hopefully I have enough. 8x8 eight eight stainless. I did find my firewall forward book for the 912 ULS, and it tells you how to do this. I install the boot cowl. Per the factory recommendations, it says to use some high temp RTV, so I have some of that. And the other thing I forgot until I was actually reading the manual was that I can't just go from here into here because I need a fuel filter uh, between fuel selector and here. So I finished drilling out these things, riveting them, and sealing with high temp silicone, just like the firewall forward installation manual tells you to for the Rotex 912. We're overboard on rivets, but I'd had already center punched them, laid them out, so that's how many I used. Did get a good, nice layer of sealant in here. I cleaned it up on the outside where it squished out, but on the inside there's a nice uniform bead uh, in here. There are several items which had escaped my memory. One was the battery contactor. I'm just using magnets on the inside of the firewall to hold them up. The starter contactor. This is the, I think it's called a rectifier. It's a voltage regulator for the motorcycle type uh, alternator. And so sitting up here, I have it on two Adele clamps. It actually might be strong enough. And one of these is pretty loose. I was thinking I might have to make a little aluminum platform that picked up a couple more holes and it'd be rock solid, but actually might be fine. And then my sudden recollection of the fact that there needed to be some filters involved. So I consulted the airflow performance manual and sure enough, there was a filter which is required. And thankfully it was supplied uh, with my stuff, I totally forgot about it because I had not unwrapped it yet. This is a serviceable filter. You pull it out, you can clean the cartridge inside it. Uh, they tell you to never use paper filter elements. It was part of my original kit uh, from Brett uh, with the fuel injection conversion. Uh, unlike the pumps, this is clearly labeled as to which way the flow is. So I think I'm going to come out of that bulkhead fitting, go to here, then make a loop back to the pumps. Then the manual tells me that I need a filter between here and here. I think it said 25 microns, and that is for aircraft which have composite fuel tanks. And then there's another kind of gravel catcher screen in here, 75 microns. I'm not sure that would ever catch anything because it was going through the 25 micron. It seems kind of redundant. And that gets me down to two more items that need to be positioned on this side of the firewall. One of them is one of these ground points, and they have different versions. This is from BNC Aerospace. Uh, this one would be mounted on the other side of the firewall with a bolt coming through and there would be a ground on this side that would be connected into the battery contactor and the starter contactor and everything else that needs grounding in here. And these other tabs, these fast on tabs I think they call them, would be on the other side for grounds for everything else in the airplane and this is actually going to be plenty. And they show a different version of this where there's one of these on each side of the firewall specifically for Composite aircraft or aircraft that just have a crap ton of electronics on this side. Clearly I don't, so not too worried about that. I think this will work just the way it is. And the last thing competing for space over here is going to be my engine monitoring unit. So this is the MGL RDAC, which has a, can't really get to it. This brass fitting is for manifold pressure and everything else is for Various settings, oil pressure, oil temperature, cylinder head temperature, which I'm going to have seven of. Exhaust gas temperature, I'm going to have one. I could do fuel flow, fuel pump, uh, voltage, a bunch of other uh, parameters. All of them user configurable. Pretty cool. Anyway, so this will just need um, off that RS-232 that's by my finger and probably completely out of the way. Right there that's the manifold pressure and the rs232 then it just has a can bus wire and then uh, power and ground and one last consideration is the air inlet for this airflow performance fuel injection system when I look in the manual the intake which I had imagined was exactly what they said not to do they don't want an airflow that's perpendicular it wasn't going to do that but the scoop I had in mind probably wasn't going to be efficient even though what I was picturing was copying the BT-13 I used to fly 
which just had a simple elbow sticking out into the wind out of sheet metal and it said that it needs to have a radius edge otherwise it will end up with negative pressure and could actually cause some airflow problems so i discovered a few things reading the manual uh, that was one of them was the air induction system and it does say to consult with them if you have any questions so i'll be doing that the other one was that this was shipped to me with this elbow on it and i could have had a straight line fitting and whether they'll just send me the new fitting uh, i'll have to ask them about that and lastly in a perfect world my mixture control is working backwards now with both of the arms for a throttle and the mixture you can leave this part intact there's some teeth in between you can remove this reposition it but it's not going to work for me to have it over here but the manual said there's a different uh, system here that i could have put in or asked for which operates backwards from this so i could have the cable come from the other side and if it pushed that would be rich and that would be idle cutoff whereas right now that's rich and that's idle cutoff so i figured i was going to have to have a cable come from this direction for the mixture and from the other direction for the throttle but if i can make that change uh, i'm going to do that and it's quite possible airflow performance will have me send in the throttle body and have them make the change uh, we'll see when i get a hold of them well, i'll send them an email today and let's see how that goes and at the same time I'll, i will also ask them uh, if they have a 25 micron filter that i can use because i do have the fiberglass tanks so one of the things I'm anticipating airflow performance is going to have me do is use a straight section, which is going to take this whole throttle body and move it out here closer to the edge of the uh, accessory cowl and the intake. And I'm not opposed to that. That'll actually put it out here where it's super easy to reach and give you some more space back there. And I realized I never got back to one of the things I was going to talk about before, which is that accessory cowl. I'll throw in another picture here for anybody who's just joining. I'm going to use some one inch Adele clamps, which I still don't have yet from Aircraft Spruce. I'm not sure what that order is, but I'm going to fabricate a temporary bulkhead. Whether it's a cardboard or plywood or foam or whatever, I haven't decided that I can start working out this shape and where I was going to do that inlet. Anyway, once that bulkhead is in here, I can start working out what I'm going to actually make this out of. If I could do it out of sheet metal, um, I would just because it'll be easy to put doors in. It's a pretty straight up shape. It's gonna look a lot like uh, classic airplanes from the 30s through the 60s. No problem there. So now I'm gonna clean up, put my tools away, go on a much needed vacation to Mexico for a week, come back and when I do, I'm gonna use the Rotax 912 firewall forward instruction manual to finalize the installation of the boot cowl. That'll be a pretty cool step. Hopefully by then I have a response from Airflow Performance on what I'm going to do next with this. And let's see, as far as the AN4 hose that I need, I already have that in the connectors. So assuming I don't need an elbow I don't have, I'm already good to go there. So I'll just need to learn how to fabricate those fittings. I've seen them done before. It's not that hard. Come out pretty nice. And then I have to order some fire sleeve. I just wanted to get my lengths right so I know how much to order. Still have to do my... Kind of cheating here looking at my whiteboard while I'm pointing the camera down here. I still have to do my header tank sumpter and installation. I have to order a transponder antenna. What else? So then when the wiring shows up, I'm going to be wiring the stab trim motor and the stab position indicator. And I will also have the coax cable I need and the wiring to do my ELT. So that part will be done. And then I can close out the rear and start doing that fabric back there. Now that I'm looking at my whiteboard again, I also have to do static boards. So that will be back there. So that's it. Clean up shop a little bit. And when I get back, that's one of the other things I'm going to do is make about three trips to the dump. We've got way too much crap in here. Packaging materials and just excess garbage needs to get out of here. So, so I didn't solve all the world's problems, but I got out everything. I think it's going to have to compete for space on the firewall and the backside of the engine. Now it's time to go back to the wiring diagrams which I created a long time ago. They're just schematics. They don't lay anything out in the airplane and then see how that works out with uh, real life. And rather than try and jam too much into this episode, I'm going to kick this one out. Thanks for watching. I'll be back in about 10 days, get some more work done, and hopefully put out possibly a third episode within a month. That'll be pretty nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.